show episode number 439. I'm your host, Mr. Sanzo. And we got, well, a slow news week. Uh, things happen. I- I'm guessing you know why. And yeah, Scour 3 QD a bit, but there's one news that I find eh, interesting. So let's hop right into it and not dilly dally. Anyway, in first news is like Bright Mashup Pony. Peggy Main appears on Entertainment Earth. So, well, uh, a while back we covered a few news about um, Hasbro crossing over their product with each other with ponies to create some awesome stuff. We get the Pony Power Rangers thing, we got the Pony Ghostbusters, the Pony D&D, and what else did they do that I remember? Um, that's about it, I can remember. And also now we got this. Uh, Light Bright. So, it's not that interesting, but if you're a collector, it should be fun. Uh, let's head into Entertainment Earth and see how much this is. Uh, price here is about $15. And you can buy it at pre-order or something like that? Yeah, you, you can pre-order it at $15 and we'll ship on January 2021. Um, let's see what the description says here. Um, go back in time with a mashup of awesome retro brands. My Little Pony retro mashup. Uh, Peggy Main has styling inspired by previous generation of pony figures. Retro figures is a mashup with another beloved 80s brand. Light Bright, this character has unique 80s inspired deco color and cutie mark design to look like classic light bright art figure is four and a half inch tall with molded plastic hair this retro inspired figure comes in a vintage team package that's great to collect and display new my little pony fans and long time collectors alike can share the excitement of this Fun and nostalgic My Little Pony 80s figure. Yay! Yep, Ghostbusters. Yeah, so anyway, um, what can I say? Uh, it, it's, it's a really niche uh, toy, really. I mean, if you're not really into G1 style ponies, then this is not for you. But if you're a collector, yay, uh, go buy them. But you know, honestly, it's up to you. Like, I personally am not a big fan of this just because of the style like I, I don't really like the G1 um, style uh, the branding is pretty awesome but I, I don't know I mean that can get pretty tired at times like um, maybe there's uh, another topic I, I, I can talk about it later on on the next thing <clears throat> but anyhow um, that is the news for this week and I think yeah, um, like I mentioned before, it's a bit of a slow news week. Uh, things happen and I-, I guess people don't update much. <clears throat> so, like I was mentioning before, um, let's talk about, um, you know, I-, I don't usually like to talk about this stuff, but let's talk about Hasbro. This year alone, I noticed that a few things happen with um, Hasbro and what they're doing with their brand. Um, I, I don't know much about the others, but I know two, uh, Ponies and Mag- Magic the Gathering. And the thing with Ponies, they're not really pushing it so hard that they're forcing you to buy stuff. But with the recent cartoon that they got, which is My Little Pony Pony Life, it feels like they're trying to push it but yet at the same time, they know that it's going to have a lot of backlash from the fans. And the thing is, uh, the full episode or the full season was released in Canada first. And then Australia and then soon to the US. And you get a feeling that, okay, um, let's just try and recoup some of what we made into other countries like treehouse they, they buy a block and they uh 
post it and whatnot. And I, I don't know how to describe this, but it feels like they're just playing it safe yet trying to milk on the fans. That that sounds oxymoron. But anyway, um, with Pony Life, they're not really pushing the toy so much. Maybe I don't see ads because I don't see um American or Western ads or ads for toys. But when I go to the mall, I don't see them pushing Pony Life that hard. I, I do see some of the toys at Toys R Us and whatnot, but it's not like how it was back in the days when, okay, uh, pony figure comes out, brushable, brushable, brushable. And then, oh, um, the Equestria Girl Minis, go, go, bye, 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 bye. But this one, like Pony Life, it's not there that hard. Like, it's there. You can, they sell them if you want to, but nah. And with this crossover thing, they're enticing people in a specific... They're, no, I mean, they're, they're enticing people in a specific manner where, oh, are you a fan of this poem, sorry, uh, of this brand from your childhood? Oh, Lightbright, you played Lightbright before, right? Yes. Uh, then you would like this crossover thingy. Oh, it's a collector's item quote unquote we only make this only once quote unquote so why don't you buy it and yeah i mean i'm reading here there's optimus prime and so on so yeah you can collect the whole set of retro uh, ponies and put them as a collection and whatnot and yeah it probably gain value in the future but it feels like that's how they're grabbing people to buy stuff. Like, oh, you like this thing? Okay, let's grab this your nostalgia and pull you in and buy stuff. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, something works, but most of the time it does. <clears throat> and like I've mentioned before with Magic the Gathering, um, this year alone, their release schedule for stuff has been insane. Like, there's always a product every month or it feels that way. So there's no time to really rest and play with what we have. Uh, with, with like what? Um, like there's a few recent set that comes out. Uh, and in all honesty, you can skip and don't buy it. But the fear of missing out, FOMO, it's there and it's urging on you to keep buying or just keep too up to date and just keep buying uh, a very once wise man told me just to buy the singles that i want true that is true but um cracking boxes or buying boxes and cracking packs uh those are like how do i put this um it's the feeling is similar to when you buy loot boxes in video games except that if you don't want your junk that you got from cracking pack, you got cardboards that you can um, collect and probably sell to the recycling center or whatever it is. I mean, there's the difference between digital and physical. <coughs> but yes, it's one of those things where every month there's, a, there's something coming out, there's something coming out, there's something coming out. And I feel like Hasbro's just saying to the people, the, uh, to, you know, um, Reserve the Coast, to just push, print and push, print and push, because pandemic's here, we're not getting any money from uh, the audience or the fans, so we need to somehow keep afloat, sell, 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 make them buy, buy, buy. And yeah, I, I feel it too hard. Like I personally, for me, felt it recently and it was not a good feeling. But hey, um, you, you at home could probably say, why keep buying? Couldn't you just not buy? Yes, that is true. But 
uh, FOMO, that's the thing. If you're missing out. See, there, there are certain sets that when you buy, there is a quote-unquote guarantee that you can make double of what you made or double of what you paid for, something like that. And yeah, um, I recently bought a box and got 200 ringgit out of a card. But at the same time too, I had to spend more than that. And it's one of those scenarios where it's better to buy the cards that you want instead of gambling for the cards that you want in a box. And I, I, I know that probably you guys at home who are listening or watching to the show don't really care they don't really care that much because hey uh you are not a card game player or something like that and yeah i'm sorry for talking about it here i just want to express feeling plus that's what i noticed about hasbro they keep pushing products so they can make more cash and you know see that's not a bad thing because if they're pushing a product that means they're trying to grab the audience of Sorry, the attention of the fans to grab them to to make them buy more stuff because hey, if you like something, go buy it. Yay, that's always been the case. But with ponies, I, I, I see that. Like they push something out and if you like it, go buy it. But with magic, it's a bit of the opposite because it feels like buy it or else you miss out. And yeah, that's not a good feeling. That's not a good feeling. And I, I think starting from 2021, I am going to slow down on the spending because with the pandemic and all, my day job is not really helping. Yes, bills need to be paid, food need to be eaten, purchased and eaten, or purchased, cook and eaten. You, you know what I mean. But anywho, those are my problems and yeah, let's, let's not dwell on them. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is well, what have I, what have I been doing my week? <coughs> oh, sorry. So anyway, um, my week has been pretty okay. Um, I haven't really been doing much. But hey, before. Oh, now I just remember something. Um, Malaysia have been. Uh, seeing a resurgence or an uptick in the. COVID-19 cases lately and the government has mandated a stay-at-home lockdown like for most states like this I, I think there's only three or four states that are uh, not on lockdown because they're considered to be low risk so um, the state I'm staying in uh, which is Johor has been hit with the lockdown and the lockdown pertains to uh, not going out without any good reasons. Uh, those are reasons are if you want to go to the hospital and whatnot. And if you are, if you go to the mall, you can only go in uh, a pair. Uh, you don't need, you don't, ca you can't stay long and stuff. I mean, it's one of those scenarios where they limit your movement so that you limit the speed spread of the pandemic and you know, honestly uh, i'm not an expert on how this works but i i know the logic is if you don't go out you don't get infected if you stay at home you'll be safe and in my case here yeah uh, i st i'll stay at home i'll be safe but Damn, am I, miss, am I going to miss a lot of, of the things that I've been doing lately? But anywho, um, before the lockdown, I went out to play ice skating. Yes. <laughs> um, funny enough, yes, even though Malaysia is a very cold country, we do have ice skating. It's an indoor ice skating rink. And I, funny enough... This is not my first time. I've played ice skating before and it's fun. It, it, it is a really hard exercise. Like it really makes use of your whole body. Uh, maybe there's science behind it. 
but from what I can tell, your body is fighting so hard to balance itself. You're standing on slippery on a slippery surface. Your body automatically tries to uh, center itself, make sure it doesn't fall. And uh, moving is not the same as rollerblades, which in fact I do know how to play. Uh, it's similar to ice skating, vice versa, except rollerblades dry and ice skating is wet. But that's besides the point. So uh, I played a bit, I, I got a few rounds, I got a really good workout. And then I took fall. <laughs> yeah, mm, I, I I was trying to speed up a bit and trying not to lose my balance. And somehow I lost my balance, went down the first, and oh god, that that, that was not fun. Let's let's just say that knee first on ice is not the greatest feeling. Ouch. But then you, um, with a bruised knee and a bit of ego, uh, I got back up, went back to the locker for a bit, and do the Peter Griffin thing. <sighs> but then that, uh, went down and ate some good food with some great friends, and, well, ended the day with me going home, tending to my wounds. <laughs> Uh, most egos. <laughs> but um, all that aside, it was a fun experience. Would I do it again? Uh, probably not. Maybe another two or five years. Uh, I'm not a big fan of ice skating. It's one of those things where it's fun and whatnot. But yeah, I, I tend not to do those kind of things. But if you're talking about rock climbing, which my mall has, I am very interested in that. Uh, just for the fact that I haven't played it before, or I haven't participated in it before. And I would love to uh, try and at least get a climb and see how it feels. I, I know that rock climbing is one of those exercises that's really upper body intensive, where you need to have strong arms, good... Uh, I won't say balance, but I, I know you need to have strong upper body uh, strength and uh, grips. And you know what? I, I like to test it out. Like I, I like to learn and see if if this thing is for me. I, I'm not 100% sure yet, but hey, um, I would really love to try it. Maybe after the pandemic. Uh, I'm not sure what to wear. Maybe uh, short pants? Hacks? I don't know. But anywho, let's move on to the next topic, and which is wrapping up. So, if you give a second, <laughs> oh boy. So anyway, um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themichagemail dot com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MDS show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo, which I really should tweet more. It's one of those things where I mostly spend my time secluded and alone because I'm a hermit. <laughs> Not really. Uh, but yeah, I, I should really uh, look at Twitter more and tweet more. Twitter should be fun, right? Right. So anyway, uh, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links will be in the show notes you would please do subscribe and rate us on iTunes as this radio for the review, for the MB show review and discussion podcast. Over there you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Totera, Reviewing Pony episodes, comics and specials. Sometimes we like to do other things other than the ponies and those are anime, comic books, video games and so on. Uh, we are a diverse group of people who like to do stuff. Uh, if given the chance to talk about it, I can talk about Magic the Good Ring. It's a fun game and it's... The price to entry right now is pretty okay. Uh, if you're planning on playing the Commander format, that is. Um, a box of a hundred cards that 
it's really open and playable. It's about thirty dollars if I'm not mistaken. Maybe lower than that. I'm not hundred percent sure, but still, it's very affordable. Um, <clears throat> but that's not what you are coming here for. So, uh, if you like support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you for me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Mr. of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I, I know this is one of those scenarios where um, there used to be many, but now there's only three of you. But still, I appreciate for you sticking around since the olden days and yeah I, I i highly appreciate your support guys it's one of those things where you got no idea how it means to me and i, I thank you for just sticking with me and supporting the show through its ups and downs and blah 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 so anywho i have been norman sanzo I, I guess there's more episodes in the future with more ponies and whatnot, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, well, I, I can't wait to review newer episodes or content. It's been a while. So anyway, I've been Omar Sanzo. I'll catch you guys next week with a little more fun episode. Of the show. See ya.